CataractCoach.com. Pupiloplasty made easy. 10 polypropylene suture is what you need to reconstruct that pupil. And it's not that hard. So this patient had cataracts already done elsewhere years ago. And you can see superior incision. Got some iris damage there. Iatrogenic coractopia. Our guesser in here is going to be placing 10 polypropylene or brand name is tenoproline, and that's on a long needle and made just through a paracentesis incision in order to engage that iris. So this pupiloplasty is going to be to engage that iris, and you can see the left hand has a blunt cannula, the right hand has the tenopolypropylene, placed through that paracentesis, and you want to grab a sufficient bite of the iris tissue. Don't go too close to the periphery or the uh, pupil margin because then you can cheese right through it. And on the other side, grabbing it again, and you can just pull outside the eye anywhere. So when it comes outside the eye, you don't necessarily have to engage uh, into a paracentesis. You can just pull it out. And there we go. Pull that needle through nice and easy. Take your time. Make sure you're above the drapes there. And there it is coming across the eye. And now what you're going to do is you're going to cut the needle off, and you're going to tie this suture. Now, you've already heard about the mechanotype suture and the Seepser suture, and that's very important to learn this. So now here's gonna be placing in a hook in the eye. You can use the iris push-pull, you can use a hook, you can use anything else you want to get that suture and bring it through here. This is that Seepser technique here. Now, Amar Agarwal in India, fantastic guy, a really brilliant guy, has taught us about the fourth row pupiloplasty. This is gonna be a little variation on that. So here, expanding that loop there, now you can see getting that water droplet out of it, and expanding that loop. And now we're gonna do the, the same thing, that pupiloplasty suture. So the suture goes through there. You pulled a loop of the tenoproline outside the eye through the paracentesis. Now you can do those loops as you need to. You can see it's looping it around the forceps here. And then you're gonna grab that other end. And as you pull through, look, watch the knot goes inside the eye. And you bring it together nice and easy. And there you're now restoring pupil anatomy. Now, of course, this suture is permanent. It's not going to dissolve with time, and it's not going to allow normal pupil dilation. So your goal is to achieve about a three and a half millimeter pupil size, maybe four millimeters. But certainly don't make it a tiny, small two millimeter pupil, because that's going to make it difficult for you to view the retina in the future. Now, that first suture went in. It's already looking a whole lot better. And now the next throw here of the suture can be done, and then you can again cinch the two ends down, and that will draw the knot into the eye. Not difficult to learn. Now, if you want to practice this, you can practice outside the eye. You can go to your shoes, grab one of your shoes, use your shoelaces, and you'll figure this out. And they're cutting the suture. You can see that micro scissors going inside the eye to cut that. And I, you could leave these ends a little bit longer than uh, typical. And now you can see one suture is pretty good, but probably not sufficient. Now you're gonna put us another suture here in this little extra defect. Remember, you'll never be able to make it perfectly normal again. You can't undo the prior trauma, but you can make it a lot more acceptable. What's your goal? Your goal is a good looking pupil and functioning pupil at conversation distance. So if you're talking to someone and they're standing about a yard or a meter away from you, when you look at their eyes, their eyes look pretty normal. Easier here with a brown eye compared to a blue iris or, or light colored iris because it's a little more obvious if there's any defects there. But you can see here just a couple of sutures is all it's going to take to really restore this pupil anatomy to a reasonable level of physiologic nature. Also having that three and a half to four millimeter pupil is going to make the patient a lot happier in terms of the brightness of outdoor vision and avoiding the glare. Patients who walk around with a six, seven millimeter pupil in the daytime are really bothered tremendously by the incredible amount of light entering the eye. So this is a very helpful approach here. Again, don't expect perfection. Expect a pretty good result. You can already see there's some atrophy of that iris and as you pass these sutures, you sometimes can get a little bit of cheese wiring. That's okay to be expected. Our goal is to make it better. It's not to make it perfect, which is just not physiologically possible. So beautiful result here. I want to thank our guest surgeon for sending in the video. We have other videos of pupil here on Cataract Coach. If you go to the website, 
and search for pupil plasty, you'll find them all.